one of the very well-known faces in solar cooling in this world and uh, you are well director of solar solem consulting you are the general manager of the european um, association green chiller for solar cooling and you are involved in many engineering and research uh, tasks uh, worldwide so i would like to know from you a status quo of the solar cooling industry at the moment yeah thanks Beable. um today we have about 1,400 systems installed worldwide now on solar cooling. So the market for solar cooling is progressing, but it's still on a, yeah, on a low level and it's a niche market. And, uh, but uh, the companies are surviving and we will see that in the future there will be a new products coming through, which uh, hopefully helps us to develop the market much more to reach such numbers like for the normal air conditioning market where we're talking about 100 millions per unit per year. Um, so that's, that's the way where the path which we would like to go. We have one trend seen on this conference um, that large scale seems to be common in solar heating. Is it also a trend in solar cooling? Yes, that's right. Um, if you have a look on the projects which are just uh, developed in the last few months and last year, a lot of large scale solar cooling systems now installed, for example, in the US or Singapore and so on, because those systems are really, uh, from an uh, economical point of view, really interesting. There you can probably match today already the, the numbers which you have uh, to succeed with the uh, conventional air conditioning systems. And with that, solar thermal cooling could play a big role, especially on those large systems in the future. I think you took part in the international um, uh, project which uh, was under the cover of the International um, Energy Agency and it was uh, about uh, policy advocacy. So what did you develop in this task? Yeah, within this uh, task on solar cooling, uh, we did this uh, dissemination policy advice uh, together with a lot of different partners uh, involved in that field. Uh, we have developed there a lot of uh, material, training materials specific to solar cooling, uh, brochures uh, showing uh, best practice examples. Uh, we have also developed some, some technology brochures uh, for policy advice and especially, and I think that's really unique, we have developed a guideline for road mapping on solar cooling, uh, how uh, policy uh, uh, can just use these things uh, to develop their own solar cooling roadmap for that, uh, their own country. So is this instrumentarium yet used? Yes, it's used. Uh, we recently have uh, um, done a, a project for the Arab League where we have used those tools which were developed in this uh, task, uh, especially on the road mapping, to show what could happen, for example, in the Arab regions on solar cooling, which uh, countries are uh, fitting best uh, with that kind of technology, or what should be happened from a policy point of view uh, to introduce those technologies. So can you give us a bit of a summary? What, what kind of technologies, or is it PV, or rather solar thermal cooling, is adaptable for this region? Yeah, you have to divide those, um, both technologies, of course, to that region, which means um, up to 100 kilowatt cooling capacity. We think that PV cooling will be uh, play a role, an uh, important role in the future in that region. Uh, above that, uh, to large systems with one megawatt cooling capacity, for example, there we still have solar thermal cooling as the best uh, technology, uh, not only from a technical point of view, but also from an economical point of view. Great. Thank you very much. Good luck for your work. Yeah, thanks for that interview. Thank you.